It's been just a month since launch and SwipeSoup has reached 465 users and generated over $200 in monthly recurring revenue. I am Daniel and I am the founder of SwipeSoup, an app that helps you declutter your camera roll much more easier. All you have to do is just swipe through photos. It's been just a month since launch and SwipeSoup has reached 465 users and generated over $200 in monthly recurring revenue. Not life changing money yet, but enough to prove that the idea works. I wanted to share the story of how it came together from the spark of the idea to building launching and growing it the idea came up completely randomly my girlfriend was running out of storage on her phone because she takes a lot of photos every time she tried to free up space she had to scroll through a lot of photos to take them one by one and delete them manually. Watching her struggle with this made me think that it should be a better way to do that. That is when I came up with the idea of an app that helps people to declutter their camera roll much more easier. Before building anything I wanted to make sure that the niche is not oversaturated. So I started doing some keyword research which is basically SEO for the app store and also named as ASO that stands for App Store Optimization. For that I used a tool called Astro and I started typing the photo cleaner keyword. The results looked promising because it had a popularity of 54 and a difficulty of 63. In plain English this means that people are searching for this keyword and it's not impossible to rank in the App Store. After doing my keyword research and finding out that it's possible to rank in the app store, I need to do one more thing and that is to check on the competitors apps if they are making money. I checked Sensor Tower and saw that a competitor application called Swipewipe generated over 1 million dollars in the last 30 days. That was insane but it was also a good sign. If someone else could do it, maybe it's more room for another app in this niche. That validation gave me the green light to start building. After the numbers looked good, I spent some time downloading competitor apps. I wanted to see how they work, what they did well and where they fell short. I looked at onboarding flows, paywalls, main features and user experience. What I liked about Swipewipe was the simplicity of its main feature, decluttering by swiping. It was fast, intuitive and satisfying to use. I decided to take the same core idea and build my own version but with improvements and a cleaner design. I knew the hardest part wasn't going to be building the app, it would be getting people to notice it. The tech stack was simple. I wanted to move fast and focus on the user experience. For the UI I used SwiftUI. For subscriptions and in-app purchases I used RevenueCat. For feature requests so the user can submit some ideas to implement in the application I used Firebase Firestore. But what if you want to build your own solution? Building your own backend is such a valuable skill so if you want to build your own backend you should check out boot.dev. Boot.dev are actually sponsoring today's video. I've been messing around with it and it's really fun. You can learn Python, SQL, Go or even TypeScript all at your own pace. What makes it different is that they made learning feel like you're playing a game because you earn XP, level up and unlock achievements. There is even a bear wizard named Boots who helps you without just giving answers. He guides you in the right direction when you get stuck which is awesome. They also have a training ground where you have endless coding challenges so you can practice as much as you want. Plus you can explore all the lessons and resources without paying so it's easy to see if it's right for you. So if you want to give it a try, you can use my code DANIEL to get 25% off your first year or use the link in the description. Thanks to boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. Keeping the app simple was crucial because when you are building an MVP you don't want a million features, you just want one feature and that should be implemented very well. Pricing was another important decision. I went with a weekly plan at $6.99 US dollars with a 3 day free trial and the lifetime plan of $34.99 US dollars. I also added a little trick that I learned from other apps. When the user closes the paywall, I offer him a lifetime deal of $24.99 US dollars. You anchor the price higher and then give them a no brainer deal. It's amazing how tweaks like that can improve conversions. Once the app was live, I focused on these three marketing channels. 
I launched it on Product Hunt without high expectations. But SwipeSoup ended up on the 7th place and generated over 52 free trials and let's say 10% of that converted to the weekly plan. So with this success on Product Hunt I will release more apps there. The second marketing channel is social media and I'm using TikTok and Instagram for that. I started posting on these platforms and honestly I haven't had a fire format yet. I'm stuck between 300 and 1k views and hopefully soon I will find a format that will cross that 1k views. But some users did come from some platforms as I noticed they are clicking the link in my bio. One lesson I have learned with SwipeSoup is to have at least one screen that is shareable. For SwipeSoup I have a stats page on which the user can see how much storage they saved with the app. People love sharing visual satisfying content so I use that in all of my social media videos. Another strategy I saw is to have a cool look King's splash screen like with an animation or something like that. Something that will make people to recognize your app. But as I'm not good at making animations I will stick with the shareable screen. And the third marketing method is Apple Ads. I spend around 10 to 50 bucks for a couple of days of campaign with a cost per tap of 0.80 cents, targeting the same keywords I used in my SO. For a couple of days, SwipeSoup was in top 5 apps for photo cleaner keyword. It was a small spend, but combined with the App Store boost that it gives when you're publishing an application, it was really worth it. So after 30 days, SwipeSoup reached 465 users and generated over 200 bucks. As I said, not life changing money, but enough to prove that the idea works. Another tip that I have for you is to listen to your users, like I did with the feature request screen. Because since launch, I had three feature requests. Two days ago, a user requested a feature and I implemented it in one day, and he went from a weekly subscription to a lifetime plan because this made the application more valuable to him and he decided to use it for life. So I highly recommend you to leave your email in the application or make a feature request screen or use some dependency for that like Wishkit. I saw that they are doing this but as I'm not making that much money I will implement my own solutions. Moving forward I plan to iterate on the user feedback, experiment with more social media formats and improve SO to reach more users. I'm also thinking about some ways to make the application more shareable because the word of mouth is another great marketing channel for your application. For example, if a user of your application tells a friend, maybe you will have another paid customer. For anyone building their first app, start small and make sure that you ship it fast because you don't want to waste time on an application that won't generate you any revenue. You don't need a big team or millions of dollars. You just need a clear problem to solve and market it so that you can have some users. SwipeSoup's journey is just the beginning and I can't wait to see how far it can go. So until the next video, make sure to take care and see you in the next one.